Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm in Lake Barrington, Illinois today, and I'm here checking out probably one of the most bizarre cases I think I've ever covered. Now, I feel like I say that quite often on my channel as I do tend to find a lot of weird cases, but I think this one is up there. Um, anyway, so this video, we're gonna walk around this kind of lake here and I'm gonna go walk to the house where this murder took place. And of course, along the way, we'll discuss the story. So let's, let's get into the craziness of this case. So this story involves many different individuals, mainly a guy by the name of Justin Newman, who was 20, and Ari Squire, who was 39. Justin Newman was a caring, hardworking young man from what I've been reading. Uh, he worked at Home Depot and really enjoyed woodworking and anything kind of related to construction. On February 23rd, 2008, Justin heard about a job opportunity at someone's house here in, of course, Lake Barrington. Uh, the job promised $15 an hour. And so Justin decided to take that opportunity. And so he went to the home. That home belonged to Ari Squire and his wife, Denise. Unbeknownst to Justin, Ari Squire was planning to fake his own death in order to get away from his money troubles. Ari Squire owed lots of money and he paid $198,000 in legal fees as he had been charged with fraud. And I believe he had to pay an additional $200,000 for his lawyer, if I remember right. But either way, Ari Squire, uh, he squandered a lot of his fortune that he had on, on these legal fees. Um, Ari Squire was a pretty prominent guy in the construction world, but essentially all his money was gone after that fraud case he was involved in. So that is when Ari Squire decided to put a plan into action. In the morning hours of February 23rd, Justin Newman showed up at his house, again, expecting to start working on this new construction project. Unfortunately, when Justin arrived, he was immediately overpowered by Ari um, and he was murdered there in Ari's garage area. However, the story does not stop there. It gets even more bizarre as we go along. So after Ari had killed Justin, he decided to fake his own death. So he decided to put Justin's body underneath his car in the garage, set it on fire and have it come crashing down so it would look like someone got crushed by a car, make it look like an accident. Um, he also swapped IDs and wallets with Justin. And so Ari's wife called 911 claiming that there was an accident and there was a fire that was set in the garage. So she needed police, needed some medical help there. When police arrived, they found the skeletal remains of a body, again, underneath a car. So police initially thought that the body was actually Ari Squires. And of course, police thought this initially due to the fact that for one, it was Ari's house his wife was the one that called 911 asking for help. And so, of course, police thought, oh, this must be 
the body of Ari Squire. So for several days, Ari Squire got away with faking his own death until they dug deeper and did some dental record comparisons. And they found that that was not the body of Ari Squire at all. It was in fact the body of Justin Newman. So at this point, they were desperately searching to find Ari Squire as a course. They now put everything together and they found that he, of course, was the one who killed Justin. Now, now, of course, Justin had been logged into the database as a missing person up until they finally compared the dental records and found that it was actually his body in Ari's garage. And so when police were investigating, they found Justin's red Pontiac in a hotel parking lot in Eureka, Missouri. They, the police officer was doing checks on different license plates and discovered that this red car was, was registered to Justin. This person named quote unquote Justin was renting a room out at the hotel. They of course made their way to the room, knocked on the door, and when they knocked on the door, they heard a gunshot. Ari Squire killed himself in that hotel room when police were closing in on him. Um, Ari's wife was not criminally charged, but she was held as a liable conspirator and she was sued for $6 million by Justin's mother and half-brother. So the house coming up here on our right-hand side this is 28031 West Lakeview Drive. This is the house of Ari Squire and Denise. Again, just imagine Justin's last moments being alive, walking up to this house, just like we are now, thinking he's just gonna come here to work a construction job of all things. And as soon as he gets up to the garage, he's immediately taken down by Ari and murdered inside this garage area. Again, it's just, it's a terrible ending for young Justin who had lots of, lots of life left to live. And again, this whole thing, this whole plan again came into action because of Ari Squire's own dumb, things he did, his own criminal actions, his fraud that he was convicted of, and the, the money, the $200,000 plus amount of money he had to spend in court costs. So he ran out of money and so he thought, oh, I need to murder someone, steal their identity, and then collect $5 million on their life insurance. That way he'll get rich again. That was his thought and that was his plan. Anyway, so I attempted to find Justin's grave to show you guys that for the video. However, his grave is, it just says unknown. And so I don't know where he's buried actually. So the best I can do is just show you the house where, where the murder happened. Um, I could drive to Missouri and show you guys the hotel where Ari killed himself, but I just figured that's kind of a long drive for me. And no one really wants to see where the, the murderer killed himself at. I don't know. Just my own thoughts. But anyway, guys, it's a hot day here in Illinois. So I'm going to head out of here, try to do a few more cases. And uh, again, I just really appreciate all, every one of you who watch my videos. You guys mean a lot to me. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.